The error occurred because the researchers administering the test had typed a decimal point into their mobile phones two spaces too far to the right, turning 0.30 grams into 30 grams. This is not the first time a misplaced decimal point has had dramatic effects. Other similar mistakes have had consequences ranging from funny to farcical and even fatal. In the spring of 2016, construction worker Michael Sargent sent out an invoice for £446.60 after completing a week's work. A few days later, he was surprised and excited to find £44,660 credited to his bank account after the director of the company he billed put his decimal point in the wrong place. For a few days, Sargent lived the life of a rock star. He spent thousands of pounds on a new car, drugs, drink, gambling, designer clothes, watches and jewellery before the police finally caught up with him. Sargent was forced to pay back the remaining money and to complete community service for his small-scale opportunism. On a much larger scale, in the run-up to the 2010 general election in the UK, the Conservative Party published a document highlighting the disparities between rich and poor areas of the UK under the incumbent Labour government. The document claimed that 54% of girls in Britain's most deprived areas became pregnant before the age of 18, compared to 19% in Britain's most affluent areas. Rather than acting as a stinging rebuke, highlighting the supposed social inequality fostered under 13 years of Labour rule, the figures were turned on their heads when Labour commentators and politicians pointed out that, in fact, the figures were only 5.4% and 1.9%. Quite apart from making a glaring error with a decimal point, the unquestioning attitude with which the Conservatives suggested that over half of girls in some areas were pregnant as teenagers was seized upon as an illustration of just how out of touch the Conservatives were with their electorate. Despite the great embarrassment to the Conservatives caused by the misplaced decimal points, they went on to win the 2010 general election, their mistake proving not to be fatal. However, it was exactly that for 85-year-old pensioner Mary Williams. On the 2nd of June 2007, community nurse Joanna Evans visited Mrs Williams as a favour to a colleague. Evans was charged with delivering her diabetic patient's insulin shot for the day. She filled up her first insulin injecting pen with the required 36 units of insulin, but as she tried to inject it, the pen jammed. She tried again with the other two pens she'd brought, but each one failed. Worried about what would happen to Mrs Williams if she did not get her insulin, the nurse returned to her car to procure a regular syringe. Although the pens were marked simply in units of insulin and the syringe in millilitres, Evans knew that each unit corresponded to 0.01 millilitres. She filled up the 1 millilitre syringe and injected it into Mrs Williams' arm. She repeated the process three more times to complete the dosage, not stopping to question why she had had to deliver multiple injections when a single dose had sufficed for her other patients. With the job finally completed, she left Mrs Williams and continued on her round. It was only later in the day that she realised her terrible mistake. Instead of injecting 0.36 millilitres of insulin, she had given Mrs Williams 3.6 millilitres, ten times too much. She immediately called a doctor, but by that time, Mrs Williams had already suffered a fatal insulin-induced heart attack. Although it's easy to lampoon the mistaken protagonists in these stories for their obvious errors, the prevalence of such stories demonstrates that simple mistakes can and do happen, often with serious consequences. In part, the gravity of the repercussions of these mistakes is the fault of our decimal place-value system. In a number like 222, each of the twos represents a different number, 2, 20 and 200, with each being 10 times bigger than the last. It's the scaling factor 10 which makes placing a decimal point in the wrong place so serious. Perhaps if we use the binary system, the system on which all our modern computerised technology is based, in which each place is only a factor of 2 larger than the last, we could avoid these errors. Injecting twice as much insulin or even prescribing four times as much caffeine might not have had such serious ramifications. In this chapter, we explore more of the costly errors that result from the systems that currently enumerate our daily lives. We uncover the often hidden influence of seemingly long disused numerical systems that provide a window on our human history and shine a light on our biology. We discover the flaws that afflict them and look at the alternative systems being advocated that are helping to avoid common mistakes. We follow the natural selection of our counting systems down dead ends and along convergent paths that parallel...